Hello and welcome to MedCast Plus. I'm your host, Dr. Jack Braha. Here on MedCast Plus, we bring you local health care providers and physicians, experts in their fields, to help educate us on a number of medical topics. Today, we are pleased and honored to have Dr. Jared Jagdeo. Dr. Jagdeo is a board-certified dermatologist and an expert in laser surgery and aesthetics. He was born here in Brooklyn, went to college, medical school, and graduate school at Brown University in Rhode Island, and then returned to Brooklyn to train in dermatology at SUNY Downstate. He then went across the country to UC Davis in California, where he was an associate professor of dermatology and continued his research on lasers and aesthetics. Brooklyn is lucky to have him back, now at SUNY Downstate, as the founding director of the Laser Aesthetics and Body Institute. And we are just so pleased to have you on the show, Dr. Jagdeo. The list to introduce you is long. Your resume is long. Thank you. You Thank are an expert, an expert. And uh, this is a topic today of dermatology, skin care, that a lot of our viewers have been asking about, talking about. And in my office, even in gastroenterology, everyone wants to know what can we do to take care of our skin, the largest organ in our body. Talk to me. How is dermatology these days? What's new? What's on the horizon? What are you doing at Downstate? Thank you so much for having me here, Dr. Braha. It's an absolute pleasure to be here and really chat with you about some of the finer things that are going on in dermatology. First of all, you know, it's the summertime and one of the things that I love to tell every patient is, is that now that the sun's out, make sure that your sunscreen is also out. Having the chance to use your sunscreen throughout the week and on the weekends as you're out having fun is one of the most important things that we as, as people can do to protect our skin from the sun. And this, this starts not just in summer, but even before summer as the rays start to pick up, the Absolutely. sun's higher in the sky. Absolutely. You know, using sunscreen throughout the year is one of the most important things that I recommend to patients. However, now in the summertime when we're really getting extended periods of sun, in terms of going to the beach, going on vacation, making sure that we're having fun just, you know, in the city, it's so important to remember to reapply your sunscreen throughout the day. I oftentimes like to let my patients know to put their sunscreen on about 15 minutes before leaving the house in the morning when they're going out, about 15 minutes before having lunch, and then right before they leave work, another 15 minutes before they apply sunscreen. So it, it's, it really needs to be applied before we get into the sun so the body or the skin can have it absorbed or, or to lather on top. And so you need to plan ahead. You know, some of the common things that people ask, and I know our viewers are thinking about right now, is I walk in the aisle of a local drugstore, and they've got 20 feet long, four rows high, of so many different sunblocks, sunscreen, sun this, sun that. What is the basics? What do we really need? Tell us a number. Is there any name or is there any buzzwords we should be looking for? So what I like to share with my patients is the best sunscreen is the sunscreen that they're able to use consistently every day. And using sunscreen every day is so important. You know, there are so many different types of sunscreens out there. Being able to try the different sunscreens before you buy is always wonderful. Sometimes that's not always an option. What I like to recommend are mineral-based sunscreens that are fantastic and that blend in with your skin tone. One of my favorite recommendations is the L'Oreal Skin Suticals Mineral UV Block Sunscreen. It's phenomenal. It blends in nicely with any skin tone. And one of the things that my patients often kind of bring up and raise as a very important topic is, Doc, these mineral sunscreens work wonderfully, but sometimes they leave this chalky residue. So it's very important for patients to find a sunscreen that works well for their skin type and so that patients can have a wonderful experience with sunscreen. Yeah, I, I, I think that's true for all of us is that it seems like a hassle to put this chalky, thick, material on our bodies and so a lot of us just blow it off but really down the road you know decades even after heavy sun exposure we see the damage in the skin and so you recommend this mineral type of uh, sunscreen but find the one that that works we've got to use it folks uh, skin cancer is common we see patients who have skin cancer all the time we should all be getting skin checkups correct you're absolutely right Talking with patients about skin cancer with regards to sunscreen is very important. That's a very important topic. However, patients have been shown in studies to be much more receptive to using sunscreen when you let them know that using sunscreen helps delay aging and the appearance of aging with regards to their skin. 
you know, everybody wants to look their best and everybody wants to look good. And one of the keys to looking their best and looking good is to use an appropriate amount of sunscreen to help prevent the photo aging effects that the sun's ultraviolet rays and visible light rays and infrared rays cause on our skin. So all, all these sun rays, which we enjoy being out on the beach and everyone feels they look great with a tan and they want to look good, the damage is not now, it's later down the road where all these rays can have aging. And that's a key word because everyone wants to look younger, as you said. Of course. So using a bit of sunscreen now can save you money down the road trying to look younger. Of and course. we're going to get to that in a little bit in the show because you are an expert at maybe looking a little bit younger. And Thank you. I don't know if you could help me, but maybe some of our <laughs> viewers. Is there a number on the sunscreen bottle that we have to pick? Is it 15, 30? We see all different things. What, what do we really need to pick? So I like to make this simple for my patients. I like for patients to be able to easily decode those numbers. I like to tell them that those numbers are basically how long the sunscreen is going to be effective for. And so if you take a SPF 15, that might work for about 15 minutes. Most people are outside for more than 15 minutes at a time, and you don't want to be reapplying sunscreen every 15 minutes. So you want to at least take a number that's going to work for your lifestyle something that is at least SPF 30, but I like to recommend to patients SPF 50 or above is fantastic. So that, that's important, SPF 50, you're gonna plan on being outside for a while, going mm -hmm. for a run, a bike ride on the beach, mm -hmm. and even then you still need to reapply and be mindful, um, especially with the young kids. Absolutely. We know that even a bad sunburn, one sunburn at a young age can lead to a higher risk of cancer down the Absolutely. road. Uh, should patients be checking their skin? Should they be asking the doctor? Should they ask primary care? Or should they come see a dermatologist for a skin checkup? I think that every patient should definitely take a look at their own skin and have family members take a look at their skin as well for the areas that they can't see. Basically, everything on the back side of us is something that, you know, it's very challenging to see. So if you have a family member who can take a look, and especially during these summer months, let's say if we're going out to the beach, you want somebody to check and see at least once a year what's going on. Preferably a board certified dermatologist. If your family practice doctor or internist, while you're having your annual checkup, see something suspicious, it'd be great if either they could biopsy it or have you make an appointment for um, an opportunity to be screened by a board certified dermatologist who are experts in the skin. Being an expert in the skin really entails how, knowing what some of the subtle different nuances are in terms of looking at skin lesions and being able to tell if those are benign or cancerous. Yeah, I think, th I think that's important. Even when I was training in primary care, we would learn a lot about dermatology, but the dermatologist the person who specializes in this is really so important because I've seen you guys walk into a room and there were six doctors a minute ago looking at a rash saying, hey, it could be this, it could be that, it could be this. And I've seen a dermatologist many times walk in and in 15 seconds give us the answer. And so when there's any question of a skin lesion that you or your doctor is not aware of, seeing a board certified dermatologist looking one up, there's plenty around is, is, is really good advice. I agree with you. Let's move on to a topic that I'm sure everyone is sitting there right now waiting to hear about is how can we look younger? What, are, are, there, are there pills, potions, lasers as you do, injections? You know, what is out there today? What is in vogue? And I know you're doing a lot of research in lasers. You're an expert in laser surgery. So let's start off with what are some of the common ways in your practice that you're able to take care of scars or some of the signs of aging? Jack, that is a wonderful transition. First of all, again, I want to reemphasize sunscreen and sun protective clothing, hats, long sleeve shirts, etc., are so important in preventing aging. Now, once but we then we'd put you out of business if we prevented aging. You know what? Everybody ages normally and gracefully. <laughs> um, there are ways that when you come to see us as board certified dermatologists, that we can really help. You know, address different concerns. And you know, and, and people are. Con this is why they come to you. They're concerned about a blemish, a scar some of the signs of aging, even if they did all the right things with sunscreen and, and skin uh, protection. Here they are in your office and you've got all these high tech. Tell us about it. So you're absolutely right, Jack. Um, a lot of patients want to look their best and they want a little help from a friend. And you know, we board certified dermatologists are the experts in the skin and we're the experts in terms of aesthetic care. Some of the things that we have available to us are lasers, different injectable devices, Botox as well, 
And these different things, when used together and used by experts, help to subtly refine the skin to help patients achieve their skin care goals. So I want to look 29 again. <laughs> Someone walks into your office and says, listen, I've got some wrinkles around my eyes. I've got some of the signs of aging. And uh, I don't want to just go on the internet and buy some potion or powder. I'm not going to walk into one of these stores where they're selling snake oil saying, rub this on every day and you'll look 10 years younger instantly. Because we all know that that's probably not true. But I'm in your office. I've got some wrinkles around my eyes. I want to look 29. I enjoyed being 29. What are some of the things you can offer me? So for wrinkles around the eyes, one of the basically home run solutions for that is really the use of wrinkle relaxers, Botox, and other topical medications that can be injected that help relax those wrinkles, relax the muscles that are causing those wrinkles, and really giving the best outcome for the patients. There are other treatments as well, such as topical hyaluronic acid, which can help subtly fade away some of that etched in look. But really, patients want to come on in, see their board certified dermatologist, and really come up with a concrete plan of action that can help the patients achieve their skincare goals. Other things that can help remove wrinkles include different types of lasers. So there's a few different approaches you could take. Probably you combine approaches, I'm, I'm sure. But I like the term wrinkle relaxers. I feel like if I just won the lottery, I'd have a, a wrinkle relaxer. But <laughs> the chances of that are a lot lower than me walking into someone's office and maybe getting a Botox injection or putting on right. some topicals. But you brought up a good point here about board certified dermatology. Because I've, I've had a number of patients who come in and they've gone to anybody out there who claims to be able to inject Botox, whether it's real Botox or not, whether they're injecting real fillers, and whether they're trained properly. Can we just go to anybody who says, I am able to inject? How should people you know, feel comfortable with who they're hiring or going to to take care of their skin? So that's a great point. How do you determine or how do patients determine who is actually skilled in the art of aesthetics. And that is really one of the things that's very clouded right now in the aesthetic landscape. There are so many different people who claim to be experts and there are so many d different people who inject different products or say that they can perform different procedures to help patients look better. And some of those people may be trained and some of those people may be minimally trained and some of those people may have no training whatsoever. And it's really important. That's why you really you know, want to go see somebody who is board certified. You want to make, you want to check their credentials. A lot of right now what's going on is social media and a lot of different photos are popping up and people injecting patients on, on social media, showing up on Instagram, Facebook, et cetera. And, you know, that's really good for growing awareness about these different treatments. However, not, not all of those people are actually core physicians who have been trained in aesthetics you know, different people can do these treatments legally. However, it's always best for patients to really vet their physicians because this is their body, this is their face, and you want to make sure that who is treating you has received the proper training to do these procedures. Yeah, you know, if someone comes in to look good, we want them to leave looking good. Absolutely. And, and there can be complications that occur when they go for some of these treatments, particularly if they're going somewhere where it may not be the most ideal person or ideal place. And God forbid something should happen after uh, going for an aesthetic treatment. You want the person who did it to be able to take care of or to recognize early to prevent any issues. And so, you know, I always tell people, because I'll be at a dinner somewhere and they'll say, hey, who do you recommend for this or that? I've been going here, I've been going there. See a board certified physician. I mean, that's, that, that's the best credential I think you can get out there because they went to medical school, they took the training, they've taken the exam, they keep up to date. You know, all of us who work at hospitals have to get continuing education. We were talking about this on the drive over. Absolutely. Uh, about continuing medical education. So I want our viewers to, to hear when you say board certified dermatologist, probably a good place to start when you're worried about how good you look and how much better you can. You're an expert in lasers. And we hear laser, laser, laser. What does that mean? What is a laser? 